Hello, hello, Crafty Kernel fam. In today's video, I just wanted to talk through my artistic process for making this piece right here. And I also wanted to finish the piece with you because this is not its completed state. So I want to take this piece into its finished state and kind of talk through how I planned the piece out, how I plan to finish it, and then you'll see the process for finishing the piece and just my whole artistic process from start to finish for a finished piece that I consider to be one of my better, more time-consuming pieces of art. Taking a closer look at this piece, what I've done thus far is I sketched out each of the members of this band. Kudos to you if you already know who it is, but if you don't, this is Blue October. Um, I love them. They're my favorite band. I've been listening to them for over 20 years and have been just a huge fan. I sketched this piece with graphite pencil, specifically my Derwent graphic pencil, and then I used a ballpoint pen to color each of the pieces. So I kept the graphite layer underneath and I don't really plan on erasing it. And then I also obviously have written here and then masked on a quote. A couple of things that I did throughout this process is the first thing I did is a couple of just quick studies of different pens because I wasn't sure if I wanted to use black pen or colored pen and then I wasn't sure how my individual pens worked with watercolor so I did a quick watercolor wash over everything to make sure that none of the pen would bleed because I do plan on watercoloring this. I also did a couple of different compositional studies in thumbnail form just to see which concept I liked the best. And I ended up going with this left hand concept, which included using the ballpoint pens. And I'm going to attempt to do kind of like a rainbow galaxy here over the words and then have each of the colors from the artist kind of going up into like this either cloud or galaxy of the quote. So that's kind of the plan of attack that I want to take with this, but I just wanted to outline for you guys like this stuff that happens behind the scenes that you just don't often see in my videos. I don't really share this process too often. And then you also see here all of these scribbles. I was having a lot of trouble with the green pen for some reason. All of the pens worked a little bit differently. So the purple pen and the red pen worked really well. They were very smooth. And then the other three pens, to be honest, just didn't behave the same. So it's good to know that in advance when you're gonna use a supply, like how it works so that you can better prepare to utilize it properly. Starting off the painting process, I first mixed all of my colors separately and had them ready to go for the wet and wet technique. Obviously, then I took a wash of plain water and just applied it to the paper waited until it got to an acceptable state and then just started in with my colors to form kind of a rainbow gradient here. It is really cool to see the colors move in that sped up timeline. I really love that effect and to be honest, really enjoy any piece where I get to create a rainbow with the wet on wet technique because it is my absolute favorite painting technique that there is. Additionally, I went in with some plain water and tried to create some blooms, though admittedly those get lost later in the piece, so while it was a good thought, it didn't actually make it through to the ending of the piece. Alright, I have to let this dry, but I think what I'm going to do is just add slightly more color in the crevices and some of the letters, and then let this completely dry because this is just the first layer. So my concept here is to have the colored bits on the bottom of the galaxy and then have it slowly fade up to like a gray and a black and a blue up here. And so this should all just be like the bottom and then have like the gray intermingle down into the color so that it's not just color. Um, so that's kind of the concept I'm going for, but I just need to fill in some of this white space and then let it dry. All right, I'm gonna go in now that it is mostly dry, but still slightly wet, and try to just define some additional like cloud type of shapes. So just little curves and stuff so that I can actually achieve what I am looking for when I go to do the galaxy. right now I just think that I don't have what I need. A 
also, I don't love the green that I chose. I went with my um, M. Graham green and I should have gone with my Winsor & Newton green. So I'm gonna try to add some of that in here as well and hopefully, oh gosh, this is shaking, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Amateur YouTuber here, hello. <laughs> But yeah, just gonna try to add some of these little, little flecks of shape here so that I've got it. I also kind of want to go back and extend some of it down a little bit like underneath this so that I don't have like a harsh line there. Although I do plan on kind of just going back over some of that as well though. Um, which we'll do here actually as well. Why don't we, why don't we do some of that right here, right now? Um, so that we've got just a little bit of it predefined. Mm. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And then this lighter orange into the yellow looks kind of cool. And then try to lighten this green up just a bit and then use the Windsor & Newton green kind of almost on its own up here and then mix it with the blue down here to just try to get like a gradient as well. I don't like how that still has the green underneath it so we'll try to get rid of some of that green. Maybe bring this up here into the purple section a little bit and then take some of our, some more of our purple down here as well. All right, I think that looks a little bit better and will help me define some of the shapes. So I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll go in with the gray black mixture and we'll do like this whole top section. So I'll, once it's completely dry, I'm gonna re-wet it and then go in with the gray and the black. At this point, I have let it completely dry. I've used a hair dryer to kind of speed that process up. And I am going to start back in with my wet on wet with my dark gray. I used Payne's gray and black to create this mixture for the top of the galaxy. And then I'm just gonna slowly bring that down into the colored parts to try to create almost like a cloudy galaxy effect. At this point in the process, I actually went through and watched a watercolor galaxy tutorial it was by karen rice art and it was so helpful and i just really wanted to use it as a guideline for this part right here where i am re-wetting over what i've already painted and she does a fantastic job of demonstrating the effect of re-wetting your paint too soon and kind of the catastrophe that ensues when you try to make a galaxy with that happening so i made sure to dry my painting so thoroughly before doing anything else with it uh definitely before putting that clean wash of water back over the top so i will leave her tutorial down below if you guys are interested personally i found it super helpful especially for this part of the painting where i was in effect trying to make a galaxy <laughs> um maybe not as strictly normal galaxy ish her, she was showing in her tutorial but um the concept still remained that i needed to layer a lot of paint on top of each other in various wet on wet washes which normally i don't do i'll usually use wet on wet first and then go over with a wet on dry but in this case the wet on wet was really important to get the soft edges and the cloud like effect that i was going for and i just really found Karen's tutorial to be top-notch so I will leave that linked down below for you guys if you're interested all right I am waiting for this to dry and I've just gone through and made kind of like a muddier version of each of my colors because I think my next step is once this is dry I'm going to kind of go back through and add the muddy versions of the colors into this to make kind of more colorful version up top but still dark and gray and I've tried to leave you see sections here where I've tried to leave the original color in there I plan on retaining that and then my plan is to take 
the original colors down to each of the band members so that it kind of is like they're all have like thought bubbles up to this galaxy so we'll see how that goes um i don't plan on doing it like right from their head i kind of plan on working off of like each of their shoulders so you know usually like two in each case will's gonna be a little bit tough his almost has to like go underneath his head so i gotta make it look like it does that but should be interesting hopefully it works out i am honestly so excited with how this is turning out so far this is by far one of my favorite pieces if not my favorite piece that i've ever done so very excited about it and i am definitely taking my time with this piece i just want to make that very clear normally for my videos i try to get it done pretty quick but this one i didn't even film any of this because it took a very long time so it just wasn't worth getting the footage of The painting has again completely dried. I changed my water, although that one doesn't look like it. <laughs> that one's fresh. That one was just my original fresh water, so I've used it now to mix new colors, clean versions of the colors. I added some pink to the red, I added some yellow to the orange, I added some light green to the green, I added some lighter blue to the blue, and added some of the light purple shade to the purple because I, what I don't want is for the watercolor to be more vibrant than the pen. So I kind of want it to be just a little bit more understated as it goes up here. So that was kind of the plan of attack there. I left the original gray black color in case I want to do any touch ups up here. But at this point, I plan on basically leaving the top part of it dry. I might wet the underside of this so that it can kind of spread up into it. And then I might take some clean plain water to kind of merge with the top in a very soft edge, but we'll see as we go along how that works. This was definitely my favorite part of this process was just seeing everything kind of come together because up to this point, everything has been very separate. The galaxy has been one entity and the characters were a different entity. And now I was finally at the point where I could make everything look cohesive, make it look like it's all one piece, and it was just a really rewarding part of the process. It was also honestly nice to work uh, wet on dry because you just have so much more control over everything that happens when you do that. Um, when you're working wet on wet, you just have to know that the paint is going to spread and there are going to be unknowns with your piece which, you know, looks amazing and is a benefit of watercolor, but at times is also a detriment <laughs> or can be a detriment depending on how you you approach it and you know how well it turns out so i definitely appreciated having a little bit more control over this aspect and just again seeing it all merge and become one complete piece i definitely think that it was a diversion from my original picture in my brain of how it would look but overall i think i accomplished the goal that i was looking for in the final piece and really um ap approached it the way that i wanted okay i am so excited with how this is coming out now it's time for the final two steps step number one i'm going to try to apply some galaxy like effects up there with some acrylic paint and then I need to take the masking fluid off and make sure that the letters uh, stay intact. <laughs> I wet some white acrylic and I'm gonna use separate brushes from my watercolor brushes to do this. I started to do it with my watercolor brush and then immediately ran to the sink and washed it off because I don't want acrylic paint on my watercolor brushes. They were expensive and it's just not worth it. I've also laid down some computer paper so that I can be absolutely positive that it's not gonna hit my um, like the, the band members because I don't want it there. I just want it on this portion of the painting. So I think I am ready to go. I'm going to see how this works.
I have to say I learned a lot about paint splatters doing this. It was kind of crazy how uncontrolled they were. I feel like normally when I do them, they are a lot more contained, whereas this time they kind of got all over the place. That might be because I used acrylic instead of watercolor, and normally I'm using watercolor, um, but for the most part, they look amazing. I think this piece looks like it shines and shimmers like the night sky, so I'm not mad about it at all. I'm just saying it was a lot messier than I was anticipating. I was also super careful removing this piece because I've had pieces rip on my block before and I did not want that to happen with this. I spent so long making this, it would have been devastating if it had ripped. I would really, really love to know your final thoughts on this piece, if this video was helpful for you, how I can improve, and just any tips and tricks that you have for my painting process in general. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do truly appreciate it. It means a lot. It would also mean a lot if you would consider giving me a like, subscribing to my channel, checking out some of my other videos, and hitting that notification bell. Truly guys, thank you so much. I will catch you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.